this is Carrie with Fullerton Professional Organizing, and we're talking a, a little bit more about meal planning. Uh, my not the last video, but one of the videos that I just did a few days ago, we talked about what I how I meal plan and the easiest ways I think anyone can meal plan. But these are just some more ideas uh, from Jen Chapin or Chapin, C-H-A-P-I-N, and I'll leave information to her YouTube channel below. But she says there's nothing more stressful and anxiety-ridden than being constantly asked what's for dinner and not having a plan. So meal planning helps to lessen anxiety and stress, and it also saves you time and money because there's going to be less food waste. Uh, she says, take inventory of what you have. Now, some people do suggest really take an inventory and writing every single thing you have in your pantry and refrigerator and freezer down. And as you use it, you mark it off. But um, she and I, we're just not that way. It's just a little too complicated uh, and too much work for us what we recommend is just make a mental note look in your refrigerator look in your freezer and your pantry just kind of make a mental note of what you have and especially in your refrigerator what needs to be used first and then use that to plan your recipes for the week um, so take inventory waste less by looking to see what you have use it or freeze it if it's freezable uh, choose recipes that you can make with what needs to be used first and then fill in the blanks with what else sounds good and be realistic um, what are your family's favorites what is your schedule going to be like this week use theme nights to trigger meal ideas as well you, and then use store ads to decide on ideas and ingredients that you may want to use right now this week and she also uses a term she calls ingredient sharing which is what i suggested but i didn't call it ingredient sharing if you're going to make a recipe and it uses one onion but you have three onions go ahead and chop up all three onions freeze some use some throughout the week and other recipes um, and that goes for all produce that you buy for a recipe Go ahead, if you're going to make that recipe, go ahead and chop up all the rest of that produce that you used in that recipe, freeze it, and, or leave it in the refrigerator to use on top of salads, or mix in some of your other meals. So, ingredient sharing, plan enough meals to use up all the ingredients you bought for another meal, but did not use or chop and freeze unless it's not a freezable ingredient. Um, uh, and then four, grocery shopping. Save time and money by using pickup services. Unless you just love grocery shopping, then you can go that route, but it really saves you time to do the online shopping. Grocery online or in store stick to your list consider using coupons and number five prep and execute small steps for big results meal plan is what we're talking about planning out for the week but meal prepping she suggests you do right after you grocery shop and you chop up all the vegetables and prepare all the meats in individual packaging so it's all ready for the week uh, for me, I only, as soon as I get home from grocery shopping, what I do is I just prep the meats, except for my breakfast meats. I wait and prep those the first time I use them on Saturday, and then I'll go ahead and prep all my bacon and sausage um, for the freezer. Then um, she says chop up all your vegetables for the week. To me, I would prefer to the first recipe I use 
on Monday, whatever vegetables I'm using, I'll go ahead and chop up all the rest of the vegetables um, and do it in little batches like that. Because if you're already chopping up onions for your chicken dish, you might as well chop up all the onions, freeze some, and use some during the week. If you're going to make uh, something with uh, ground beef the next day and it calls for carrots, then go ahead and chop up all the carrots. That way you're doing it in small batches, but you're doing it for the whole week at, as you go because really you're not doing it for the whole week. Some of those vegetables are going to go for the whole month. So that's how I look at it. Um, I'm not just prepping for every week. When I prep, I'm prepping all of that stuff for the whole rest of the month. Uh, just And that's how I get ahead. If that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. But now uh, on her YouTube channel, she does show you how to do a lot of meal prepping. And she has keto recipes as well as re regular recipes that you can check out on her YouTube channel. Um, but Jen says meal planning is not intuitive to a lot of us, but Jen gives uh, steps to help us eat better and spend less. The frequency that which you meal plan should match the frequency with you when you grocery shop. Now, uh, Jen says, I know what it's like to be super busy and try to get a meal on the table every single night. And honestly, it can be a challenge regardless of whether you're a working mom or not. Pre-planning your meals and writing them down helps keep us accountable. You can write them on a calendar or on a magnetic pad on the fridge where everyone in the family sees it. Keep a list of family favorites in your meal planner that you can reference for easy to go to meals. Check recipe sites such as recipeland.com to generate recipes with ingredients. You can just type in rice and it'll give you some ideas to use up your rice. If you have some leftover celery or whatever you have left over in your refrigerator, you can research uh, recipes. And you can some of those sites you can even put easy. So it'll just give you the easiest recipes. Or you can ask for the most popular recipes with those ingredients. Um, and that makes it interesting. Um, grocery shopping online can help eliminate or reduce impulse purchases, which will save you some money. Take inventory of your pantry, fridge, and freezer. Planning meals around what you already have reduces food waste and saves your money. Choose your recipes. Involve your family by getting them to tell you their favorites or by picking out a recipe they'd like to try. Be realistic and look at your schedule to see how much time you have available to prepare meals. Fill in the gaps by having theme nights. You can also get inspiration from items that are on sale at the grocery store. Make your grocery list and shop. Be sure to stick to your list. That will save you money. Use coupons or one of the rebate apps such as Fetch or I bought a, uh, I think my husband uses um, Rakuten. Prep and execute. Wash your produce and prep your meat as soon as you get home or the from the grocery store or as soon as it's delivered. When listing out meals for the week, be flexible. Meals with ingredients that will go bad sooner should be cooked first. All right, and then um, some ideas from Kimmy Hughes. Um, she has a website also. It's um, She's in her apron, and Kimmy shares the tips for making sure what we have in our pantry, fridge, and freezer lasts longer by freezing or making freezer meals. And she has so many tips on her 
uh, YouTube channel. She says, keep an inventory of what food you have, tracking the things you don't want to go to waste and needs to be used right away. Now, she tries to buy, I don't know, I think four months of groceries at a time or something like that. She has like a whole uh, garage full of canned goods and she keeps herself very well stocked and buys all of it when it's on sale. Um, I do, she says, I do like cooking, but I do not like to slave over my stove every night. I want meals and things easy to grab, ready for use. Some of the staples you should have on hand, she says, unless you're like us, we don't eat these, uh, we don't eat pasta and rice, but if you do, uh, the staples you should have on hand is pasta, potatoes, onions, beans, oats, canned tomatoes, chicken broth, eggs, cheese, and frozen ve veggies. She says the frequency of meal planning is a personal preference, but the easiest way is to base it around how often you grocery shop. If you aren't sure what foods can be frozen, look in your store's freezer aisles and see what is there. Uh, you know, you can pre-chop your onions and freeze, your bell peppers and freeze those, uh, mushrooms, um, cauliflower rice, uh, you can make your own and freeze it. These are things that I, I make, um, you can pre-cooked hamburger, pre-cooked taco meat, pre-cooked chicken taco meat cooked cauliflower rice, chopped onions, bell peppers, mushrooms. These are the lists I made while I was listening to the videos of her YouTube video that she did not mention that I uh, thought of as we she was talking. Uh, egg and sausage cups, egg and bacon cups, um, cauliflower cheese soup, Alfredo sauce, cheese sauce, cauliflower and mushrooms, chopped for Italian, well, I would cook the cauliflower into cauliflower rice and mushrooms to use in place of pasta. Uh, cook cabbage to use in place of pasta. Um, and then she had some ideas. Uh, chop, I, I was thinking chopped up ham and cheese or chopped up bacon and cheese in baggies waiting to make cheese sandwiches. Um, she suggested pre-making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but put the peanut butter on both slices so the jelly doesn't make the bread soggy. Uh, slow cook pot roast to use to eat now and to use later in tacos or salads or whatever. Sandwiches. Rotisserie chicken can be purchased or cooked and deboned and froze for chicken tacos. Uh, pre-made shepherd pie. I would use cooked cauliflower, but you can use your mashed potatoes. She even says you can freeze mashed potatoes. Make the mashed potatoes and just freeze big scoops of them and um, defrost them as needed. And then she talked about egg salad sandwiches. I thought maybe chicken and egg salad sandwiches would be nice. I'm to have Oops, sorry about that. She's in her apron. <laughs> Video was going. Um, let's see. So what else? The frequency of meal planning. Okay, we already talked about freezing it. Uh, make a list of your family's go-to meals and sides. Can they be made from shelf staple items? Check out sales ads to see which items you can make into meals. Most fresh fruit and veggies will stay fresh longer by not washing them until you are ready to eat them. Now that is something new to me because I always thought if you wash them and if you wash them and chopped them up and had them ready to go in your refrigerator, you'd m more likely eat them because they're already ready to go. But she says don't do that until you're ready to eat them because they last longer. Uh, when you are ready to eat them, soak them in water with vinegar 
and let them soak and then rinse well um, and then you can chop them up and uh, put them in your refrigerator for the next day or so or uh, eat them right away vacuum seal foods to help them last longer in the freezer now whole chickens are less expensive than pre-cut pieces roast a whole chicken to use in several meals such as enchiladas soup salads etc you could also do that with rotisserie chickens already cooked and deboned them uh, plan a day just to make freezer or make ahead meals another option is to double or triple the dinner you are making one night and freeze the extras I do that well sometimes I do that uh, not on, on purpose but the recipe is for more than you know for a whole family and there's just two of us so we're always going to have leftovers uh, and then label your freezer meals with the directions for cooking and the cooking time you can make these with your and you can make those labels with your printer now the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is some ideas from Jamie Bacon and she also has a YouTube channel but Jamie helps us find our definition of healthy and gives us her five step meal planning process to relieve the stress and confusion of healthy meal planning having a stocked pantry of staple foods means you will always have meals available to cook jamie says now more than ever people are putting a huge focus on their health but all the information out there is can be overwhelming which is true that's why I tell you a lot of different ways to meal plan and um, and I try to make my plan meal plans super super easy um, there are many definitions of healthy and none of them are wrong the amount of your grocery budget isn't as important as actually sticking to the budget some suggested foods to keep stock are rice dried or canned beans peanut butter pasta and sauce oats frozen vegetables frozen chicken ground beef or turkey um, anything that can be frozen just happens to last longer and i have discovered for salads uh the coleslaw mix which is just chopped um the just the chopped veggies that go in coleslaw without any of the sauce or any of that those veggies i use those in place of salad for my salads because the that lasts longer in my refrigerator than lettuce lettuce just seems to go bad so quickly and plus you know we've eaten so many salads over the years that you know the it just changed things up with the uh, coleslaw um now let's see oh and of course these are all healthy suggestions but of course if you're diabetic you know you're gonna have to make those adjustments uh, a little differently make meals healthier by being aware of salad dressing portions and added protein and veggies and fats healthy fats like um, avocado to every meal uh, decide what your definition of healthy is based on your family's dietary needs as a guideline for meal planning find your budget this may vary based on your dietary needs as well try to plan meals based on what is on sale that will also help your budget um, and of course the fact that you buy more things that can be frozen will help your budget because your the things you purchase won't go bad as quickly so plan those meals based on what is on sale if you are an impulse shopper try online shopper shopping to help you stick to your budget set aside a certain amount for example five dollars each week to work towards stocking up on staples that are on sale 
Set a timer for 10 minutes and write down all your family's favorite meals. Try to list enough for one to two months. Now that's what I did. I put all the easiest and favorite, the most favorite easiest meals and I made a two month meal. Well, actually I made a, yeah, a whole month meal plan with suggestions that can be switched up every uh, month um, and I stuck with uh, themes for the de for the meals that way I have a set plan that I'm gonna make every week and then I know exactly what groceries I'm gonna buy every week they're always always almost always gonna be the same and then if I have a recipe that I want to try and change up that's when I will buy something else another ingredient or so to change things up uh, but I've gone over that so many 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 times in some of my other meal planning uh, videos you'll have to watch those um, but let me repeat that again. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Write down all your family favorites. Try to list enough for one to two months. And then ask these five questions when you're meal planning. What have I run out of this week? What can I make from my pantry? What can I make from what's on sale? What can I make from my master meal plan list? That's all your family favorites. And do I have any emergency meals set aside for when your schedule is so tight and so busy that you don't have time to cook? Um, guys, I hope all of these meal planning um, videos are helpful to you. They have been to me. I have a certain way I do things that is super, super simple, but sometimes my husband gets super tired of some of the things that I make on repeat. Like right now, we're not making chicken wings. Wing Wednesday went out the window because he got tired of chicken wings. So what I decided to do is make that week Italian night, and sometimes it'll be Alfredo sauce, or spaghetti sauce based recipes and maybe one Saturday a month wing night so because he's he is tired of it we do eat a lot of chicken because of dietary reasons so that's why he really gets tired of certain recipes because we really do make a lot of chicken recipes now I'm trying to work in on Fridays because Fridays was frozen frozen or fish now it's frozen fish pizza or hamburger and of course we eat our hamburgers without the hamburger buns and we change it up with either a cheese sauce one time or an alfredo sauce another time so and then on sundays it's usually barbecue night my husband will sometimes barbecue once a month and we will freeze brisket and or if he's made ribs, we will freeze ribs and we will have those leftovers. But then we ha we'll have some Sundays will be link sausages, some will be steaks, and, um, and then we switch up whatever barbecuing that gets done. And then, like I said, wings on another night. Um, and I guess that was on a Sunday. Because Saturdays are usually soup and salads, but they're always soups that my family really, really loves. Um, their most favorite, and I say my family, but now it's just my husband, but still, it's his favorite, is the taco soup. You can make chicken taco soup, or you can make beef taco soup. And then we switch it up with, instead of baked potato soup, it's cauliflower, cheese, and bacon soup cabbage and sausage soup um but you can have seven bean soup five bean soup you can have all there are several different t soups that you can make caldo uh pollo um uh, pozole chili when it's winter time 
there's a lot of easy, 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 easy recipes out there that you can make and it can make your life so much simpler if you know exactly what you're making for the whole month and it just takes the pressure off of you, especially if you work full time, you have kids and, and then if you have a side hustle, it's, there's a lot going on. All right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.